ladies and gentlemen, thanks for inviting me and thanks to Globe Forum for arranging this uh, interesting meeting. And when I came in here this morning, I just felt at home. The green grass, the, the birds uh, that are singing, uh, and a lot of forest. And that's where I live, up in the far north. Uh, I really appreciate this event because I think it's important to focus on solutions more than on problems. Uh, because there's no doubt that we have uh, environmental challenges uh, and when we face them today we see that uh, we have to do something for the future citizens of the world. Uh, these problems is uh, a threat to our economies but also to the planet we live on. And therefore I think we need leadership. Action has to be taken without delay in every country and all, in all levels of the society. By government, as us, by researchers, by individuals, by business and industry. Europe has set up tough objectives to reduce greenhouse gas emissions. The EU has decided on a 30% reduction of CO2 emissions by 2020 within an international framework. These are very ambitious goals for Europe, but without goal, global objectives, they may have little uh, effect. Europe will urge other developed countries and emerging economies to take an active part in multilateral efforts to combat climate change. As I say, it's easy to paint a dark picture tough choices to be made between continued global warming or fundamentally changing our lifestyle. But this is not the way I see it. My picture is bright if we do things right. I see a golden opportunity to develop our industry and our economy. It is possible to change our lifestyle without jeopardizing welfare and to save the world's natural resources. This is an opportunity we can't afford to miss. Sweden has shown that it is possible to increase the GDP and at the same time decrease the CO2 emissions. Since 1990, we have increased our GDP with 44%, but decreased the CO2 emissions by 9%. Political goals like the European Union's climate and energy package send vital signals to the market to step up investments in renewable technology. And I'm convinced that stable long-term rules will create dynamics for the market actors creating new jobs and economic growth. Not only for big companies, SMEs, rural communities and farmers can also sit in the front seat. But as politicians, we must also make sure that new emerging technologies also are affordable in poor parts of the world. <clears throat> Taking care of the environment should not be a luxury only for a selected few. Environmental friendliness should be easy and profitable for everyone. I believe that we need to take the European goals and ensure commitments at all levels. Therefore, the Swedish government decided, for example, as the first government in the world to take action towards the state-owned companies, which I'm responsible for. We just adopted new guidelines for reporting and the financial year 2008, all state-owned companies will present a sustainability report in accordance to Global Reporting Initiative's international guidelines agree, short term, for sustainable reporting. And I believe in reporting as a tool to drive work for, forward with sustainable development by clear reporting and follow-up. Because people tend to do what they are measured on. By this action, our state-owned companies can be in the forefront and can give inspiration for the private-owned companies. And other governments now want to learn from us. We need to remember that change is constant. We have gone through the age of steam and the age of oil. 
But today we can all see that old-fashioned in the industrialization poses a major global threat to our ecosystem and also on our economy. Therefore, we need a new shift to an age of renewables. It is now we have to start the next revolution, or if we manage it right, an evolution. All countries have the right to have the same living standards as we enjoy in our part of the world. But we have to find ways to do it smarter than the generations before us, if we are going to keep the world a place <coughs> worth living on. Less energy consumption and less use of resources. Therefore, we have to look at energy and increased use of renewable energy with a broad international perspective. A sustainable solution to the world's growing needs for energy is truly important for peace and security in the world. I know that business all over the world can help. We have to learn from each other to find the best solution. And nowadays, globalization makes this possible in a way that we have never seen before. I know that we have a lot of investors, but a lot of small companies that needs finance. And therefore, I'm happy to hear about the microfinance that you have uh, decided about in the Globe Forum. Ladies and gentlemen, what we need now is ambitious targets. We need steering tools. We need economic incentives. But last but not least, we need leadership. Strong leadership on all levels. Air brave leadership in every part of our society is necessary if we want to help our children and grandchildren. Because as Yuan said this morning, when I'm working with this green technology, with the renewables, with a, a sustainable society, I always do it for my children and my common grandchildren. Thank you very much. <laughs>